Good morning. It's my first trip to Portugal. I love this country. I love this city. I love this gorgeous monastery. What a wonderful place. We're here to talk about going the extra mile. The extra mile is when you've gone to the end and nothing is working. You're out of energy. You're out of hope. But you still go forward. Five years ago, I was dying. I had kidney cancer. It was very probable that I would be dead by Christmas. Here I am today. When I got better, I learned about the e-patient revolution and started speaking about it. And I'm going to share with you today what's happening in the e-patient revolution in many countries. I mentioned, I spoke a year ago at TEDx in Maastricht, and I described what this e-patient was about. Equipped, engaged, empowered, enabled, you can add your own, expert, educated, anything. What does empowerment mean? In medicine or in government or anything, empowerment means that you know what you want and you ask for it and you do something about it. A disempowered person, a powerless person, says, oh, there's nothing I can do. But an empowered person says, I have problems, but I'm going to act. I'm going to do something about it. This was that talk, which is now on TED.com. I'm not going to do this today, but in the middle of that talk last year, I did do a rap about e-patients. Uh, and what's interesting to me is last June, they put this TEDx video on the big TED website. And what happened, you look at the top number there, there have been 350,000 views. People are passing this to their friends. Why? What's happening here? You'll also see down at the bottom, you can add subtitles to a TED video, and volunteers have added subtitles in 26 languages which means some people have said e-patient is only in America. Well, no, 26 languages, including Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese as well, and Chinese, traditional, and simplified. Why? What's happening here? What is it about people around the world that says so many people want to know this? You know, the chant at the end of this video was, let patients help. What's happening here? Well, what happens is when you find out that you're dying or your mother is dying or your child is dying, you may want to go the extra mile to do everything in your power. I found this cartoon last night on the internet while working on this talk. This is a computer programmer who drew what it felt like when he found out that his girlfriend had cancer. All of his other emotions just stopped. And I remember when they told me that I had cancer and I was almost dead. This is what it felt like. Everything changes, the priorities are different. You think, is it all over? Now, consider this. If you turn this upside down, it looks like the economy. <laughs> so what cancer patients do, or what patients with a serious illness do, is the same thing that we need to do when it looks like the world's economy is ending. We need to find something to do and take action. Because of the internet, we can connect today with information, and this is what e-patients do, we can connect with information and with other patients. So 30 years ago, if I found out I had kidney cancer, there was nothing I could do except listen to doctors. Today, I still listen to doctors, but I also talk to other patients. This is something new that has happened, and we're trying to change the culture so that everything we do now will take advantage of these new resources. This is important because your doctor is responsible for more information than he or she could possibly read. Look at this graph. This is the number of new medical articles that are published every year. In 2010, there were 800,000 new articles. Your doctor probably has a thousand patients. How is your doctor supposed to keep up on all that? And yet, my, the people I know who have kidney cancer, we have one subject that we study as, as deeply and as widely as we can. 
So my message here, I spoke last year in Jerusalem at the Israel Internet Society. Very hardworking, smart people, doctors and lawyers, thinking about patients using the Internet. And I said, it is no failure on anyone's part if a doctor has not seen an article that a patient has seen. There's just too much for anyone to read. And I said, any doctor who believes that they are supposed to know everything is in big trouble, because you can't. This is uh, what the world looked like, what the solar system looked like before Copernicus. When we thought that blue dot was the Earth, we thought the Earth was the center of the universe and everything rotated around. Well, the yellow circle, the movement of the sun, was pretty simple. But when we looked at other planets like Mercury, doing all kinds of strange things. And this, as we try to improve healthcare, we have a similar problem. Because no matter how hard we try, the problems don't get better as fast as we think they should. Copernicus said, let's look at it differently with the sun at the center of the solar system. This is elegant. You'll hear a presentation later today about elegance, finding a simple, clear solution to, to help improve the world's problems. And indeed, healthcare is going through a Copernican shift. We have had doctors and hospitals at the center of the universe, and things are complicated. We're shifting to thinking of patients at the center of the universe. And when I say patient, I mean you sitting there, your family, people who can take action, who can go the extra mile. The big TEDMED conference in Washington, D.C., a medical TED conference earlier this month, they opened a list of 50 challenges facing healthcare and said, which ones should we vote on to be the big subject for the next year leading up to 2013 TEDMED? Out of those 50, proposed ideas, number 19, I got to wear this button as the advocate, number 19 was to consider what is the role of the patient in changing healthcare. And out of the 50 candidates, role of the patient was voted in third place out of 50. The world is starting to reconsider what is the role of the patient. Now, at TEDMED, this woman was painting, I mentioned her in my talk last year, her name is Regina Holiday. She had a horrible experience. Her husband died of kidney cancer, the same disease I got. What do you do when something horrible has happened? You can close down, you can say, I'm, there's nothing I can do, I am a victim. Regina goes the extra mile. She has turned her tragedy into advocacy. This is, she's painting the, the story of her husband's death, a 60-foot mural in Washington, D.C., and she noticed that everybody, many, many people you see on the street have a medical story, but they haven't gotten it, it hasn't been shown to the public yet. So she has started painting people's stories on the backs of coats. So when people go to medical conferences, you can see their story. I didn't bring mine with me this time. She calls this the walking gallery, the walking art gallery. And in fact, it's drawn so much attention that our America's top doctor, the Surgeon General, Regina Benjamin, has met with her, and they've, uh, she, Regina Holiday, painted her a painting as well. Kelly Young, I mentioned last year, a rheumatoid arthritis patient. Many rheumatoid arthritis patients have trouble finding a doctor who understands their disease. Last year, I said that she said to a doctor, I want this bone scan that a lot of patients have said will work. And the doctor said no, and they went through an argument, and the doctor fired her. And she has not been able to find another good doctor since then. So I asked her yesterday, was this worth it you know, to go through this trouble? And she said, well, it turns out that my doctor had said that there was nothing more he could do for me anyway. So I really didn't lose anything. So what did she do? She went the extra mile. The world doesn't understand her disease well, so she created a new foundation, the Rheumatoid Patient Foundation, where she and her friends are publishing information to teach the industry. This is a graph about the ways that rheumatoid arthritis can kill patients. And her doctor had said, you have to wait for a new drug to be approved. Well, she's not waiting. Next week, she'll be in Washington talking to the FDA about moving things forward. That's going the extra mile, because she doesn't live in Washington, D.C. 
Hugo Campos is a Brazilian friend of mine who lives in San Francisco. He has a defibrillator implanted in his chest so that when his heart has bad rhythms, it will save him from dying. Well, he's not just going to sit back and wait for things to happen. He says, my doctor has an iPhone app and can see everything that's happening. I only get to see paper six months later when I go to the doctor. He said, I want to know what's happening. He said, why not? You know, I have this little Fitbit a pedometer. It counts his footsteps and gives him a graph. He says, I have this blood pressure monitor that connects to my iPhone, and it gives me a graph. He said, every morning I step on this bathroom scale. His bathroom scale has Wi-Fi, and it records his numbers. He's, he, talk about going the extra mile. He's doing everything he can to be responsible for his health. He has a sleep monitor, a headband thing called Zio, and it keeps track of how well he sleeps and how long. And all of these things cost $99, $149. Well, he also has this $30,000 thing attached to his heart, and from this he gets no data at all. So what is he doing? He could sit back and complain, but that's not what empowered people do. Empowered people go the extra mile. So he's talking to the manufacturer. Also, he, he made a simple little form for his iPhone, so when he feels something going wrong with his heart, he can keep track of what happened, and it goes into a spreadsheet, so he's collecting all this information. Because he doesn't want the defibrillator to save him from dying, he wants to avoid having the problem in the first place. So just from doing this, he figured out that scotch whiskey gives him atrial fibrillation, so he doesn't drink scotch whiskey anymore. So he wants the raw data. Now think about all this. He has nothing in his favor. He has bad circumstances. He might die at any time, but he's going the extra mile every time. Some friends in Spain took this document, you know, the Dr. Tom Ferguson I mentioned, who said e-patients are empowered, engaged, and all that. He wrote this 120-page paper. Well, after some conferences last summer in Barcelona in Bilbao, some Spanish friends translated it into Spanish. So now there's a Spanish version because they want people in their country to be able to understand all this. A Dutch hospital in Nijmegen on the German border, the man who runs their healthcare innovation center has said he will not go to any more conferences, medical conferences, unless they have patients speaking, unless they provide money to help patients come speak. He has this, he made this new logo, patients included. This conference has patients speaking. So this conference, TEDx Oporto, gets this badge. After the TEDx last year, we had a meeting one night at their hospital. Doctors and patients talking about how can we work together in some new ways. One of the patients there was this man, René Tabak. A few years ago, he was dying. He needed uh, a heart surgery, uh, and he was not able to get it. And he, he and his wife fought and got it. And so now this year, we had a similar event, and now Rene is leading some of those sessions. He's teaching other patients to do what he did. There was nothing in his favor, but he was not stopped. He went the extra mile. Some people think that patient empowerment is an insult to doctors. It is not. I, I love great doctors. This is my primary physician, Danny Sands. Notice how we, he turns the computer so we can look at it together. He says, he's an expert in medicine, but I'm an expert in my body. So he, this is my oncologist, the doctor who saved me from the kidney cancer, David McDermott. Brilliant man and very happy to answer my questions. I hope that your doctor will answer your questions. This is Andrew Wagner. He's my surgeon. He took out my kidney laparoscopically, a huge five and a half hour operation. And this woman, I was riding bikes with her for, to raise money for cancer for my hospital. Megan Anderson, she's the surgeon who repaired my leg when it broke from the cancer. All of them excellent doctors. The biggest thing I got out of surviving cancer was in 2009 when I got to watch my daughter get married. That was a wonderful thing. And I have new news. Two weeks ago, my little girl, 
ran in the Boston Marathon, one of the hottest days ever. It was 30 degrees Celsius. And talk about the extra mile. She said, the way you run a marathon is you treat it as a 20-mile as a run followed by a 10K race. Well, she finished. There she is. She was very enthusiastic. This was only at mile eight. She was more tired by the end of it. But nothing was going to stop her from having the life that she wanted. If your world is looking like this, ask yourself, what can I do in the face of all these circumstances to be an empowered person and make life better for myself and the people I care about? Regina Holiday found a way to paint people's medical stories on jackets. Kelly Young is going to the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, to help get more drugs approved. My Spanish friends translated the e-patient paper into Spanish so that their friends could, uh, could read it. Rene Tabak is teaching other patients how to be like him. You know, it's funny, when I first started talking about this a few years ago, some people said, okay, Dave, well, you're unusual. Uh, you, your story might be true, but you're the only one. Then we started seeing these other ones and they said, okay, well, all right, but that's only in America. Now we have people that we see doing this overseas not the least of whom is this magnificent man, Manu Fosash, did I say that correctly? Uh, who has, in the face of horrible circumstances, has created this terrific event. What will you do? The e-patient revolution is marching. Our motto is let patients help. What will you do to go the extra mile to make the world better for the people in your family and the people who follow you? And if you want to see an amazing example of that, wait until you see Nita, our next speaker. She is just a terrific example of somebody who will not be stopped by circumstances. Thank you so much, and let patients help.